The Osmonds could easily be considered music's royal family. However, behind the glitz and glamour was a number of heartbreaking tragedies that can't be overlooked. Though the world is familiar with seven of George and Olive Osmond's children, many don't know there are two older brothers who never stepped into the spotlight. The couple's first two sons, Verl and Tom, were both born deaf, which resulted in doctors actually advising them to not have any more children. Fortunately, the Osmond parents didn't take that advice to heart and went on to have seven more children. Despite the health challenges, it was actually Verl and Tom who became the inspiration for their younger siblings to take their singing more seriously. George and Olive were often approached by members of their church complimenting their younger son's singing, which led them to wonder if they could turn their talents into a way to purchase the older boy's hearing aids. That led the couple to take their children singing more seriously, which led to a fateful Disneyland performance that got them noticed. Donny Osmond opened up about his older brother's challenges to Ability magazine, saying, "...my parents decided they were not going to treat my brothers differently. My brothers talk and communicate verbally. They also sign and do have that down quite well. As a matter of fact, we used sign language when we were performing together as a group." Donny also noted that it didn't stop them from performing either, as he recalled how his brothers played saxophone at a show. Donny Osmond wasn't treated kindly by the press during his teen idol days. After making a name for himself singing alongside his brothers as the Osmonds, he got out of their shadow and became a solo sensation in the early 70s with hits like 1971's Go Away Little Girl. Despite gaining adoration from teens everywhere, music critics weren't quite as kind. He reminisced about his rise to fame with The Mirror in 2016, saying, I'm one of the biggest teeny boppers in the world, and Rolling Stone magazine comes out with an article which says, The worst day in rock and roll history was the day Donny Osmond was born. A teenager is just trying to figure out who he is, let alone having that. That's the ultimate bullying. It really hurt me." He also faced a lot of criticism for his squeaky-clean Mormon upbringing, which meant no drinking, drugs, or many other elements of the so-called rock and roll lifestyle. However, Donnie feels vindicated as he has remained healthy and achieved major successes, unlike other peers who overindulged in the excess. Remember this moment because this is so darn cool. The fifth-born son, Merrill Osmond, was one of the founding members of the Osmond brothers before they became the Osmonds. He grew up in the spotlight and was the group's first lead singer. Despite the important role and position, Merrill told the Yorkshire Post that it wasn't in his nature and he experienced bouts of anxiety. Those struggles continued into his adolescence, Merrill said. For me, I was the least confident of the brothers. Everyone knew I struggled with my weight. I had an eating disorder. I starved myself. He told the outlet that he once attempted suicide, explaining how the number one records didn't help with depression and anxiety. He opened up about the incident to the Mirror a few years earlier, stating, "...the only thing that stopped me taking my life was a miraculous wind that came out of nowhere and almost blew me over. I realized there was something going on that was bigger than me, and it startled me to the point where I put the knife down and decided I was going to face my feelings head on." Merrill also shared that he was diagnosed with bipolar disorder at age 30. In 2008, Murray Osmond published a memoir titled Behind the Smile, My Journey Out of Postpartum Depression. Within the pages, there was a shocking revelation that she had been a victim of abuse, a topic she addressed during a stop on Larry King Live. She remained tight-lipped when King asked if she suffered abuse at the hand of multiple people. However, Murray revealed, I was definitely abused and it was definitely sexual. She added, those types of things to go through, you think you are over them, but it is the long-term effects of those types of things that you don't even see. Your thinking gets skewed, and I think that is what happened to me and my boundaries were lost. She'd later open up further on The Talk in 2019, sharing, when I was about eight or nine, I actually thought I was gay. The reason is because I had been sexually abused to the point that men made me sick. I didn't trust them. I didn't like them. I was looking at women and I thought, why am I looking at women? I must be gay." Marie added it was her family that made her think differently about men when she realized she had good brothers and a great father. See, I always call her my partner in crime, and she really is. Growing up in the spotlight wasn't all charmed for Marie Osmond. The star opened up about an occasion on the set of her show Donnie and Marie where a producer belittled her over her weight. She told Page Six, "...it was on that lot that I was taken out to the back by some head of the studio, and I'm like 5'5 five five and about 103 pounds, and he basically said, you're an embarrassment to your family, you're fat." The harsh words led Marie to start a strict diet, 
that saw her eventually weigh around 92 pounds. She told the outlet that it was only when she caught a glimpse of her shocking reflection that she realized what she was doing was dangerous and made her change. Despite that incident, Marie's weight issues continued throughout her life until she got onto the Nutrisystem program complete 55. In February 2010, Marie Osmond suffered a devastating loss when one of her eight children passed away. Entertainment Tonight reported that Marie's son Michael died by suicide. The outlet added that Michael left a note stating that he experienced severe depression. At the time, Marie put out a statement that read, "'My family and I are devastated and in deep shock by the tragic loss of our dear Michael, and ask that everyone respect our privacy during this difficult time.'" Later that year, Marie appeared on The Oprah Winfrey Show to discuss the tragedy, telling Winfrey, "'When I heard him say to me, I have no friends, it brought back when I went through depression. Because you really feel so alone. I'm not a depressed person, but I understand that place, that darkness. I told him, I said, Mike, I'm gonna be there Monday and it's gonna be okay. But depression doesn't wait till Monday." She would again discuss the loss almost 10 years later, telling CBS Sunday Morning, you know, I don't think you're ever through it. I think God gives you respites, and then all of a sudden it'll hit you like the day it did. The ripple effect is so huge, what you leave behind. In 1987, Alan Osmond was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, specifically an unusual form called primary progressive MS. Since receiving his diagnosis, Alan has not let it keep him down, telling the Daily Universe, "...I just determined when I got it, hey, I may have MS, but MS does not have me." A close friend told the same outlet that Alan doesn't complain about it, while Suzanne Osmond echoed the same sentiment by saying her husband has never used it as an excuse. Alan's son David inherited the same disease and had first-hand knowledge after witnessing his father's struggle. "...There was so much going on and I was diagnosed with something called MS." David was diagnosed at age 26 and recounted his first symptoms to Yahoo, saying, "...I took my shoes off and I turned to my girlfriend. I said, my feet feel like they're being run over by a steamroller. Within a few weeks, that crushing feeling progressed up my legs. It was all the way up to my chest within a few months." Wayne Osmond received the diagnosis of a brain tumor while touring with his brothers in 1994. The musician reflected on the experience to Coping Magazine in 2004, saying, one day when I was working in Branson, I noticed I couldn't play my saxophone anymore because my head would start throbbing and my knees would fall out from under me when I was on stage. This all began happening within a week. While on break from the tour, Wayne headed home and scheduled an appointment with his doctor, who sent him to see a specialist. He eventually ended up with a scary answer. He said, "...I was diagnosed with a pandemoma, a childhood cancer that is very fatal for kids. It was located up behind my cerebellum. For where it was, it was pretty big. It was an inch around and two inches long." A 17-hour surgery followed, after which doctors got very candid with Wayne. He shared that one told him when they saw his MRI, they thought he was a dead man walking. But after the surgery, they referred to him as a miracle baby because the cancer was gone. After the scare, Wayne eventually returned to the stage, telling Coping, "...I went back to performing six months after I was diagnosed. I wore my cowboy hat on stage since all of my hair had fallen out from radiation, but after a while, it grew back." The youngest Osmond family member, Jimmy, gave loved ones and fans a fright in 2018. While performing as Captain Hook in a stage performance of Peter Pan in Birmingham, England, Osmond suffered from a stroke. Though he was able to finish the show, he was taken to hospital immediately after the performance, where the diagnosis was determined. But his brother Merrill said he's doing better. He's enjoying life better, I think, than he has in a long time. Mm -hmm. The stroke actually wasn't Osmond's first, but his second in two decades. He suffered one back in 2004 and told Parade Magazine at the time, "...a blood clot popped in my head, not due to high blood pressure or high cholesterol. I went on stage and felt that pop and then lost my vision, although I could see a little pin spot. I thought it was a migraine, and amazingly, I drove home." He explained that it took years to recover after surgery, adding, "...after a diagnosis by an echocardiogram, I had the defect surgically repaired at the University of Utah. I did feel the after-effects for 10 years and would sometimes get a numb feeling." Like his younger brother Jimmy, Jay also experienced a stroke. Jay's took place in 2020, and the Osmonds drummer posted the news on his Facebook page to let his fans know about what had happened. He wrote, "...I didn't want to alarm anyone, so I hadn't said this earlier. A couple of months ago, I came really close to a stroke, blood pressure over 200. They said I had a mini-stroke." Jay revealed the cause, explaining how it was brought on by non-work-related stress, and he had received medication to calm and lower his blood pressure levels. Despite the health issues, Jay credited his wife Karen Randall for helping him get through it. 
He added, using his pet name for her, my angel Karina has been helping me deal with it. Along with Jay Osmond's health issues, his family also experienced a tragedy in September 2014. The same year he married his second wife, Karen Randall, she experienced the loss of her granddaughter, London Mortensen, who was just seven years old at the time. The National Enquirer reported that she was killed by a moving trailer door that fell and crushed her while at her home in Arizona. Jay took to X, formerly known as Twitter, to make a statement, writing, "'Our hearts are heavy with the loss of Karen's granddaughter. How sad it is to lose someone so sweet and so young.'" What makes the story even sadder is how a source told the National Enquirer that her family had been in the middle of a move to Utah so they could be closer to family when the tragedy struck. If you or someone you know is struggling or in crisis, help is available. Call or text 988 or chat 988lifeline.org.